All right, so we're going to continue with module four, which focuses on using solids to create uh, geometry in Rhino uh, in our series of videos for Rhino for our architecture. This is modeled after the uh, pavilion by Smiljan Radic from Chile, South America. And it's going to feature using creating solids uh, and really highlighting the Boolean difference tool, which essentially, as you can kind of see here in step one, we create this donut shape, which is going to be the actual sort of pavilion. Uh, uh, and then these shapes here are actually going to be the items that we subtract from to get uh, these gaps in the actual shape. And then we can use the box edit tool to actually further skew it to make it a little less uh, perfectly uh, donut shaped and a little more of a organic natural flow to it. And then in our last step here, we're going to actually be creating um, uh, a floor from which the interior will be used. So let's go ahead and get started with the first step. So I'm actually going to be modeling in the four viewpoints, uh, viewports here as well, because I think especially for this one for solids, it is a little bit more helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and turn all of these off so we can actually just go ahead and uh, practice and all our views will not be uh, informed by the examples. So let's go ahead and start with our Taurus uh, command. I'm going to make sure my grid snaps and orthos are on. And let's go ahead and make a circle. We're actually set, selecting the center circle here. So then we have to click again. It's going to be the offset of that. Right? Okay. So we have our basic shape. So from here, we're actually going to be creating objects from which to subtract this from. So you can use, if you go to the solid creation tab, you can actually use any of these uh, and even play around with different uh, shapes because a lot of these. Um, you can create lots of different sort of shapes in Rhino um, very quickly and easily. Um, right, and so uh, for this, I'm actually going to be using ellipses to give a little bit more of a kind of natural uh, opening for windows or for doors. So go ahead and select here, select here, and we're actually going to be, this is why using the viewports is beneficial in this uh, because when you're creating solids, sometimes there are three dimensions. Uh, you have to click three times, essentially, to make an actual object. So it's nice to be able to quickly go back and forth in views. And so here we're just going to be making, essentially, shapes to be subtracting from our shell. And there are multiple commands you can use to actually kind of make more of these shapes. I got my ortho grid snap on, so I'm going to turn that off for this. So I'm going to actually rotate and copy this, so then I can kind of create even more shapes kind of start out from. Similar to our module three with surfaces, uh, we just need to get some shapes in here and then we can actually begin to skew these so they're not completely the same. And maybe some are bigger than others and some are a little bit more skewed than others. So we can create a little bit of variation here in this uh, shell. And so we got that down. So now for the next step, uh, we essentially have our kind of um, our basic shape here, which we'll need. And so if I turn on the, right, so it's kind of the same same idea. So now I'm going to make a copy of this. And now I'm going to use the Boolean difference tool to subtract this from the rest of our shell here. So let's go ahead and type in Boolean difference. And this tool is specific to the solid tools. So it's actually located right here as well on the solid tools command. Um, it's a very useful tool, which uh, I believe uh, can be used quite a bit when uh, using uh, modeling. So let's go ahead and select our shell we're going to subtract from. And then let's go ahead and select our elements, which we're going to subtract with. Okay, you can see shapes starting to form here. So we can actually go ahead and delete those. And then in our perspective view, you can see how those begin to take shape. 
So now we have this kind of shell of the pavilion, uh, but we actually want to hollow this out too. So the next trick to this is to actually make a secondary porous. And when I move this one, I actually didn't have my grid snaps on. Um, so it's we won't be able to find a perfect center. So I'm going to have to actually make sure my grid snaps are turned off again and kind of guess at where the center is here. Uh, normally, you'd have your grid snaps on for this. Um, we'll get pretty close. OK, so now I've selected my center line. And I want to get somewhat close. I want to make sure that it doesn't at any point actually exceed uh, outside of the um, exterior or the interior. So I'll actually go ahead and make sure, give a little bit of a gap there. So there's our shell. So we can do the Boolean difference again. And subtract from, subtract with. And it's going to create that. So we can subtract our original shape. And now we have what appears to be uh, an exterior envelope for this uh, piece of architecture, right? So using the Boolean difference uh, twice and creating the same shape twice, just scale down, can actually create a sort of a shell of what was once there. So now looking at our example model, now you can see how this one is a little bit skewed. That's because of the box edit tool. So this is a useful tool also if you're kind of looking to make um, not as perfectly uh, orthogonal sort of geometry. And so for organic architecture, organic shapes, this one is really uh, a really great tool. So if we click on our shape here and actually go to the uh, solid tools and, or I'm sorry, we're going to go to the, the transform, which is the much more generic sort of uh, transformations. We're going to do cage edit, is what it's called actually. So we're going to have all kinds of uh, settings that we're going to have to jump through. Select control object. And sometimes it might take a few times to get it right. So let's try this again. Select our object. Press enter. And then we want a bounding box. And we'll click C plane. And we'll just click enter. And then we will do global. So all of these gives us this sort of cage around it. And from here, uh, you want to do this after you sort of have your uh, holes in your pavilion cut. And you can cut more after this, um, but this does kind of keep everything together. So now we can actually use this box, right? You can see if you move that, um, you can actually edit the geometry of it and skew the overall shape. So go ahead and play around with that and get to a particular shape, and then we'll continue on to step three. Okay, so we have our skewed shape. So let's continue on to step three, which is actually creating a floor for our pavilion. And unless you intend to have uh, sort of a uh, kind of organic sort of floor and shape here, but we're actually going to create one um, pretty quickly and easily. So we're going to go ahead and just go right into uh, well, first of all, we're going to actually copy this. We'll actually use the copy in grid snaps and ortho. And I should have done this the first time, but we're going to do it now. So let's copy this off. All right. Hmm. So we had a couple of weird things going on there. So we'll escape out of the box edit mode, and now we will copy. So let's go ahead and copy this down. Okay. So now we have our final shape. Let's go ahead and make a surface with the rectangle tool around the whole thing. So let's go into our perspective view and kind of get this into place. All right, sorry, now it's kind of going through the whole thing. And maybe it's better to actually do this in uh, one of our elevational wireframe views. And maybe we can change this to a shaded view to get a better look. Okay, so this is kind of the, the upper portion. And if we go to the right view, 
This is actually going to be sort of the implied entrance. I'm actually going to use the bend tool too because I don't want just a flat surface on this. I want to actually make it a, a sort of progression towards the top. So let's go ahead and make sure our ortho and gritter is off. And then we can actually kind of see in our elevation view where that's going to come down to. So there's, that goes down to that. And so I'm actually going to bend it a little bit further. I want to make sure that it's actually going to be cut by the shape. Okay, so I fixed my floor. And so now it will definitely be split by the object. So let's go ahead and put split. Object to split will be the floor. And it will be split by our shape. So now I can actually delete and delete. So now we are left with an interior floor. And so that is the final step in this uh, tutorial. And there are many, uh, these uh, commands we learned can be applied to um, any shape, even more um, orthogonal geometry, uh, such as boxes and um, uh, more linear um, objects. So um, hopefully you enjoyed uh, these tutorials, and I hope they were inspiring enough for you to be curious and continue to use Rhino uh, for architecture in the future. Thanks for listening.